Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Um, speech days, leavers days, whatever you want to, to call them, can often be a fairly dry affair. They can rather quickly descend into a long litany of speeches which you could soon switch off from. They can be from people that you don't know and who don't know you, who simply give you a general boost before sending you off into the world. I hope very much that today is not like that, and I will try very hard to be brief for me, and I'll try as well to keep it relatively interesting and perhaps relevant to your life experiences, those that you have had already and those that are yet to come. Today, then, I want to start by talking to you about tattoos. A 2019 study published in the Journal of Economic Behaviour and Organisation stated that nearly a third of 25 to 39 year olds in Britain have a tattoo and a fifth of the population as a whole have one. The study was published because of a paradox. There have been numerous studies which show that employers and society at large discriminate against tattooed people. Yet, at the same time, the number of people with tattoos continues to rise. The man behind the research stated that, from an economic perspective, this decision to have a tattoo is puzzling. Tattoos are about making some kind of statement. And he questioned why so many people would affix a visible stigma to one's identity. The study went on to conduct a series of experiments on people with and without tattoos to test how future oriented they were. The study concluded that people who got tattoos, especially visible ones, were precisely those less likely to consider the implications of their decisions in other areas. Tattoos are getting more and more popular though, so does this show us that fewer people are thinking about the implications of their decisions? Or does it show us the importance of fashions and trends in our influencer society? The popularity of tattoos has fluctuated wildly throughout history. The Bible is clear that tattoos are forbidden. Leviticus 19.28 states, you are not to tattoo yourselves. However, that comes shortly after Leviticus 19.19, which states that you are not to wear a garment made from two kinds of fabric. So given the woolen suit I'm wearing has a silk lining, I'm in trouble. Islam continues this attitude towards tattoos with one hadith, which are slightly later accounts of what Muhammad said, stating that the prophet cursed the one who does tattoos and the one who has tattoos done. Tattoos were clearly a big deal though, a long time before Leviticus and Muhammad. Leviticus was written in some time around the fourth century before Christ. Europe's oldest known natural human mummy, a chap called Otzi the Iceman, was found in the Tyrolean Alps in 1991. He lived around 3,000 years before Leviticus was written. He was about five foot three and weighed about 50 kilos. He ate deer, barley and fruit. And Otzi had a total of 61 tattoos. Now these tattoos were created from a pigment manufactured out of fireplace ash. One presumes that those evenings back in the Copper Age were pretty drawn out. And after a long day running from woolly mammoths, what else are you gonna do but settle down to a spot of tattooing round the fireplace with friends? The word tattoo comes from a Samoan word, tatao, which means to strike. And the practice of tattooing in Britain was thought to have been brought back from Polynesia by Captain Cook, who you may recall was the man who discovered Australia. I wonder what the people who lived there felt about being discovered. But Cook's science officer on his first journey south in 1768 was a chap called Sir Joseph Banks. And he is thought to have gotten a tattoo when they visited Tahiti. On Cook's later voyages, many other sailors of his got tattooed. And the trend amongst sailors for tattoos has continued up to the present day. Perhaps one of the interesting outcomes of this was that the Navy has attracted several members of the royal family. And as such, they've gotten tattoos. The current Queen's grandfather, King George V, was a midshipman 
on HMS Bacante in 1881 as a 16 year old when the ship visited Japan. He got a dragon on one arm and a tiger on the other. Now, Prince Harry may be the archetypal millennial amongst whom tattoos are very popular, but as far as I'm aware, he's not rocking massive animal tats on each arm. Churchill's American mother had a snake tattooed around her wrist, which she'd cover up with a bangle when in polite company. Between the late 19th and early 21st century, though, tattoos fell quickly out of favour. The mid 20th century US writer Truman Capote said, there's always something terribly flawed about people who are tattooed. They are certainly something that divide society. In 1969, the House of Lords debated making the tattooing of minors, and at that point, minors were those under 21, illegal. In the debate that followed, Lord Robertson, a Labour peer, said, tattooing had become prevalent in recent years, particularly among young people of low intelligence. Some 40% of those in borstal and detention centres were tattooed. Among young people, it has become a trendy thing to do. The trouble is that as years go by, the foibles of youth fade, but the tattoo does not. Wonderfully, though, two other peers, one of them a Tory, spoke of the tattoos they'd gotten when they were minors and stated it did them no harm. So what about today? It's clear that tattoos are no longer the preserve of sailors and criminals. The great and the good now have tattoos. Dame Judi Dench got one on her 81st birthday. Dame Judi Murray got one at the age of 57. Notably though, they are both people who have made it. No one is not going to give Dame Judi a part in a play because of a small tattoo on her wrist. Judy is an amazing tennis coach and will always be in demand. You, the Leavers, are 18 years old, about to embark upon the real world. What should you do? Follow the trends or not? One of the funniest films I've seen in recent years is called We're the Millers. It is a crude, laugh out loud US comedy. There is an incidental character in the film called Scotty P who wears a vest and a beanie hat. I think most of the outgoing upper six would have seen this film, perhaps some of their parents. He's only on screen for about five minutes, but he steals the film. He has a visible tattoo on his chest, which reads, no regrets, with the word regrets, spelt R-A-G-R-E-T-S. No regrets is apparently, as he puts it, my credo. He is a comic character presented as being stupid and is someone that we should laugh at, and so we do. Are tattoos comic? Perhaps. Now, I am not advocating that you all go out and get misspelt tattoos in highly visible places. I have no doubt that your parents and your grandparents would be up in arms were I to do so. I'm not even advocating that you get correctly spelt tattoos in discreet places, the so-called TTT, or tiny tasteful tattoo. If you do choose to get a tattoo, though, I'm asking you to get one and to never once regret it. Getting a tattoo may be a decision that you make at a certain point in your life. It may be a decision taken in the heat of the moment or of drink. It might be a decision taken to rebel against society or your parents or a future spouse's expectations of you. It may be a decision you've already taken and some of you may not yet have told your parents why they've not yet seen you without a top on for the last month. If the last one is you, please just tell them it will be better in the long run. I'm asking you to not regret taking the decisions that make you who you are. You are all wonderful people who are perfect to others, if not always to yourselves. Don't spend a life regretting the road not taken. It will not help. Think about what regret is linked to. It is inextricably linked to opportunity. You have all had, I hope, great opportunities here at Prior, and you've made the most of them. Those opportunities, though, will not stop. They will still be coming thick and fast over the next decades of your life. They may not look like opportunities, though. Often, they'll look like challenges, threats, dangers even. 
Every one of them, though, is an opportunity for you to grow as a person and to be a better version of yourself and to avoid regret. Bronnie Ware is a nurse from Australia. She spent several years working in palliative care, caring for people in the last 12 weeks of their lives. She wrote a book about these experiences called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And I'm going to list those regrets and my thoughts on what they might mean for you as you embark on your lives after Prior Park. The first, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. You are all at the point now where your life becomes very much your own. Your parents will be there. Your old school will be there. However, you and only you know what will truly make you happy. And I hope, now I know that this school and your family have given you the courage, the knowledge and the skills to pursue your life, not anybody else's. The second is, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. So please don't work too hard. And that's a really strange and quite difficult thing for a headmaster to say. Work to live, never live to work. The third, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Please never leave something unsaid, unless to say it would be hurtful to no purpose. If you love somebody, tell them. If you miss someone, say so. Don't be shy. You will never regret saying thank you. And you will never regret saying sorry. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Look around you. This school is filled with your friends, with people who care about you. If you don't work to keep those friendships alive, then they will fade away. You will make loads of new friends in your life. But every friendship needs a little time and energy to keep it functioning. I wish that I had let myself be happier. Happiness is a choice. Habits that don't make you happy can be changed. You can and almost certainly will at some point pretend to everyone, yourself included, that you are happy with your life. It's really easy when asked to say, I'm happy, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. But it's not always true. Try asking yourself if you are content. If through hard work, through keeping those friendships alive, through being true to yourself, that you've created a life that is truly filled with contentment. You leave this school, we all hope, with a sense of who you are and where you might like to go in life. You've got all the building blocks you need to enjoy the rest of your lives. Add to those a willingness to take risks and to live a life with no regrets. And it should be a happy one for you and for those who journey on it with you. And finally, if tattoos do make you happy, get loads of them.